Good morning and welcome to my studio. This is another um, video for Oak Art with Linda E. Today I wanted to do a tutorial. Uh, I made these glasses for a character doll that I'm working on. And let me see if I can get him in frame so you can see him. This is um, one of the bankers from Harry Potter. And he wears a pair of glasses. Um, I made him using um, cause clay, polymer clay, and I made everything you see on him. For anybody who's never made their own glasses, this might be um, a helpful tutorial. So since I'm doing it anyway, um, I'll start with the um, the pair that I already made and I kind of like the shape of them but I I definitely made the stems um, a little bit too wide and the nose bridge too narrow I need to go the other way okay so um, I'm going to use this uh, gold colored wire that I found in my jewelry making stash it's not as um, hard to bend as steel, so it should actually be a little easier than the steel florist wire was to bend. And I'm going to pull off a fair bit more than I need. I think this was about um, three inches of wire that I used, and it turned out to be a little bit short. So this time I'm going to just take a little extra, and I'm going to go with about five inches, even though I know I probably only need about three. And I'm going to do all the bends right in the middle, and that way I can give a good long length to reach actually up and over and catch on his ears so that um, I don't have to worry about gluing them on or anything. They'll, they'll just clip onto the ear and stay. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is find what would be the middle of this wire. And um, I'm going to do that by gently creating the arch that would be the middle. I'm going to hold these two ends together and then I have this tool uh, and the tool I'll put in the description. Um, it's a jewelry wire looping plier. Um, this is actually an older one. Uh, let me see which camera can focus on it. It's a half, it's kind of like a gator's mouth. The one side is a half circle and then the other side is a concave half circle and when you bring the two of them together they put a very nice, neat, small bend in the wire. All right, and that's going to mark the middle for me because I, I need it to be a soft curve and sort of follow the curve of this pair. And then to continue curving and get it in that full half circle, you want to grab it again and curve again and again on both sides and that will start to round it downward and each time you crimp it you'll see it get a little more round and I don't want it fully round but I want it pretty round I want to make sure that these lines come down straight on either side of the nose again because that part was pretty close to perfect over the nose there bring my model back in for a second Try that curve over his nose there. That's pretty good. Okay. Now, I'm going to follow my pattern again. Except this time, when I start to curve up, I'm going to curve around farther and bring it out to about there. And I did that the same way. Just look at the tool and mark where you want the curve to start. I'm just using my nail to help me keep track. Am I doing that right? Yeah. And then start curving the wire. And you can stop as many times as you need to and check the... Um, there we go. That's pretty good. And it's going to be a little bit taller this time, which I'm hoping will do the job. Come over this way a little because I want it to be longer. There we go. Oops. <laughs> Let's see. Line that up. All right. 
You see it's a little bit wider. And now that it's out here, I'm going to go ahead and bend this part over and then use my little pliers. You can use pretty much any kind of plier. I'm going to hold it right there and then bend that straight back. Okay, so we have the new uh, piece and as you can see it's shorter. I'm amending my design from the original design because like I said I wanted it to be a little wider and the lens is not going to go up as high. Now for the lens itself I'll be using um, UV resin and I'm going to use this uh, plastic cling wrap as my release agent and I will go ahead and make the lens on the piece on the tile. Um, that will do after after we get our other side of our lens here, our lens frame rather, shaped the way we want it. Now we're going to go on here. But back to this pair. I want to make sure and keep this good and wide. I don't want it uh, too narrow. The other pair was too narrow and I wasn't keen on it, so. Okay. The other thing is symmetry, which I can see I do not have yet. That's better. Let's just okay. This is actually really soft wire, so some of the tool work that you would have to do with a stiffer wire, you're not going to have to do with this. This is um, jewelry wire for doing wire wrapping. Okay, dry fit time. I'm actually going to take this little quill and the book I made for him out of his hands, just a little leather bound book, little blank journal. It turned out pretty good. I'm happy with it. I don't want to mess him up because then I'll have to make him again. Okay, let's bring him in and try this on for size. Let's see what I think of him. Oh yeah, if I can, oh, I might want to reduce or at least bend the shape of that nose bridge. It's off wide. Okay, let's see. Just going to reduce, try to hold these other two and reduce the top. Gently, very, very gentle pressure. I'm also going to bend it in slightly just to get it to catch the top of his nose. Try again. Our little fit test. Oh, it still needs to be bent out. And That's, oh, that's good. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. I like that. It's resting on the bridge of his nose pretty well. Oh, wait, hold on. It's way up there. I don't want it way up there. Bring this down wrap around the ear. Come on, down. Always a little trial and error. Make sure that um, your face that you're working with has um, has been sealed, so you don't accidentally scratch the face that you've spent so much time working on <laughs> while you're trying to make the glasses. And I sealed his with Mr. Super Clear. Okay, that'll do for the frame. And you see that took no time at all. And I'm going to even these two sides up a hair. Okay, a 
let's remove that little bit of extra. Okay, so now what I want to do is take some scotch tape. And I don't need a lot, so I'm going to just make some little strips. Okay. And I want to tape this down. There, I'll start with this side where it's flat. So you want to make sure that you're taping it down flat but that your tape is not where you want the gel to be. And if you have to prop it some other way, then do so. Put a weight on it or something to that effect to get it to stay exactly where you want it to be. This should be completely flat, even if you have to hold it while you do this next part. Okay. Now, take one more little piece of tape. Can you save if I get that in frame? Oh, on one, but not the other. All right, let's put it up there. Okay. And this is just here to help keep this bit down. I'm just giving it a little extra pressure. Okay. I'm going to take a little drop of this. I'm going to put it on the tape because it reminds me that that's where it is. I don't lose track of it. A very small amount. And I'm going to use initially just this little LED flashlight. Um, it's a, a blue light flashlight. I'm going to pick some of this up on the end of my brush. And I'm going to just very lightly coat this frame to the place where I want the lens to stop. Put my other glasses on here so I can see. A little light. Sorry about the glare. But I do need to see what I'm doing. Okay. Oops. Now you could just apply the drop of um, UV gel right here in this area, but if you put too much in your initial layer, it's going to seep under the edge of the frame, and you're not going to be able to design the shape that you want quite as well as if you just very carefully dab it on. Now you want to make sure that you touch the frame itself everywhere that you can to make sure that when this cures, it cures um, attached to the frame. Okay, so I'm going to cure this first one, cover the stuff on the tape. And this stuff smells awful, so if you have a fan, turn it so it's blowing the uh, air away from you. It smells awful while it's curing. Okay, so first layer done. Add another drop over here. Now, because his glass is a half a lens and not a whole lens, I can't use um, cabochons, which for like Santa Claus glasses, you can. Um, they come in all sorts of different sizes, the easiest material to work with. So, all right, so I'm going to finish up this side, release it from the plastic. Wait, am I going to release it from the plastic? Let me think about that one. <clears throat> I might wait. 
I'm going to go ahead and set it. And then I probably will have to shift to get the other side anyway. flat. Next lens. So I'm going to remove this tape. Hopefully it will let me without pulling up this plastic. It's such thin plastic. Even this tape is wanting to stick really well. There we go. One down, one to go. Now if you have a hard plastic or even silicone, um, you can do that as well, which is probably preferable, but I don't have any silicone handy to use at the moment. Let me go ahead and uh, see if I can get this to release just for my own curiosity. Oh, it popped right off. Very good. So side one has its little half lens. Cure the back side just for giggles. Sorry, took that out of frame. It's amazing stuff. It literally cures just, just with UV light. You don't need to do anything else with it. But it makes a very nice lens. It's perfectly clear. And if you put a bevel on it as you're making it, it actually will magnify just like a regular pair of glasses would. Let me see. Oh yeah, that's much better. You can clearly see the glasses, but he is definitely only looking through them when he's looking down. Um, they're reading glasses, so... Okay, now we're going to do the other side. Gauge my little strips here again. Tape this down so it doesn't move around. You want to get it as flat as you can. If it's not sitting flat, take a second, which mine is not sitting flat, grab a pair of pliers and try to flatten it out. Try again. Yeah, that's better. Make sure your plastic film is flat and smooth. And not, um... Oops. Make sure your tape is not touching the area where you're going to put your UV gel. Okay, a little press down. Make sure and wipe the fingerprints if you left any on the plastic away. Right, before I let that cure, I'm going to go and add a little thickness to the other side along that top edge. Okay. And when I'm done, I'm going to put these in my UV nail oven, which they use for the UV nail polishes. They just stick your hands in there and <coughs> that sets the resin. Needs one more cure just to make it release. Okay, there it goes. Peel right off. Okay. Let's see. I still want to thicken up this top edge of this lens. Oh, I got in the way, didn't I? <coughs> Let's see. Let's try that. Okay, so you can take that flashing, that overflow, and just very carefully, you can use an emery board if you have one handy, or you can just use a piece of sandpaper. 
and you're going to stir up some dust and just as before you don't want to breathe that in so make sure you have a fan blowing it away from you okay and then you can see the extra is already gone on that side now you're not trying to remove where it's attached to the metal frame you're just trying to get that little lip where it done it sticks out above the wire in this direction so i'm kind of holding the paper at a bit of an angle i'm trying not to touch the wire at all it's a little fiddly because it's so tiny it's hard to hold on to okay better and just that quick it took like three seconds and if it's fully cured you don't have to worry about um doing what i just did which was i took the dust that was on my hand from the sandpaper and touched my lens there we go it wiped off thankfully but if it doesn't wipe off if you get something on it and it clouds the lens don't panic just grab your uv gel again grab your little brush Fresh piece of tape. I'm going to put an extra coat on this because it's just still pretty thin on that top edge. Just grab a little more UV gel and hit it one more time. with another coat which I was going to do anyway oops sorry Make sure that top edge is getting a little more thickness. Okay. It's probably not a good idea. Sorry, I'm having to blow the air away. Probably not a good idea to inhale any of the fumes from these. All right, it's going to go back in the oven, and then it will be all done. Uh, oh, yeah, not a good idea to look directly in the UV light. It can't be good for your eyeballs. <laughs> Also, if you don't want to smell this in your room and get that question every time you walk in, like, what does that smell? Cure the uh, stuff on the tape, because if you tear that off and throw it in the trash can without curing it, it um, continues to smell awful. Okay, so very quickly, that was wire, UV gel the little clamping tool and a pair of pliers any kind or a stick this stick is how I made these you can see it fits right in there I just wrapped them around wrapped the wire around the thing made sure that I followed the reverse pattern so whatever this one did that one did the opposite and it makes for a nice uniform looking design and that's about it that's all you needed and uh, your brush and you're good you can make your own glasses and you can use any shape you want you could even make square glasses it's totally up to you practice give it a shot and let me know what you think of the technique and because you have created this little um, little circle here which, let me just make this one a little bigger because that's the size. This is just for illustrative purposes, but you can take a cabochon like one of these. Now, you have two options here. You can make it so that the flat side is facing the doll or the round side is facing the doll. Um, the flat side is going to look more like glasses. And you just get it on there like that. 
I don't know if you can see it, but you put it on like that. And let's see. And then you use the UV gel. Uh, take and apply the UV gel to the metal frame. Sit your cabochon on. Use your uh, magnifying uh, flashlight and go ahead and that UV gel will be like a tack weld. It will glue it right to this. Then you can, you know, once it's attached, you can angle it and go ahead and fill in any little gaps that are left over. The flatter the cabochon, the better. Um, you can also use transparency film. Um, it's a little more fiddly because you have to cut it to the exact right size. And it's, you know, not the easy. one facing up, one facing down. You can see the difference in how they look. But you would definitely set them in with the UV gel. I'm trying to just use the tension of the frame here and it's not enough. But very easy with the cabochons to make a believable pair of glasses, but the um, having them face up this way, it actually magnifies the eyes underneath. If you flip them over the other way, you have a normal looking flat lens, and it does magnify still, but not as drastically as the dome. So you can do that, or you can cut out a perfectly little round um, piece of transparency film and slip it in through the little fold in the wire above create this you can use the same resin material to create the bond for the transparency that you did or would I should say for the cabochon glasses in the oven for a little over three minutes and that is the new pair compared to the old pair. And let's see, over the eyes, over the ears. Perfect. He's glaring over them, just like in the movie. And I can seat them right there, back on the nostrils. Perfect. Now we got them. Very good. Let's see. Alright, send that away for a minute. Actually, turn it off. Let's see if I can show him. There we go. You can see him now. Let's go to just camera one. Oh, camera two. There we go. And see if you can see the lens. There's a little flash of it there. And that is just UV gel, but it's very well attached. And make sure that you bake them long enough. If you have a little flashing over the edge of the frame, like see here, there's a teeny bit of overage. Just grab a, um, a very sharp X-Acto blade, or you can actually use a little, um, like an emery board. And just carefully grind that off, which apparently I don't have an emery board handy, or I'd show you. But it's it's very easy to remove. You could probably also use acetone on a Q-tip 
to um, remove it. But there you go. There is a tiny little pair of wire frame glasses all set and ready to go. And you can shape them however you want. You can use different types of lens material. So have fun, experiment, use any kind of wire you have available. Doesn't matter what it is. You can get all different sizes of wire, thank goodness. So you can make glasses for big dolls, little dolls, um, and have fun with it. No sense paying $12 for a teeny weeny pair of glasses you can make yourself for next to nothing. And that's the end of this tutorial. If you like these mini tutorials, let me know in the comments. If you'd prefer full tutorials on other things, let me know that too. And maybe what you'd like to see. Subscribe if you want to see more. Hit the little bell icon. Facebook will let you know when I upload new content. And um, like the video for me. So it gets put into the feed. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. I recorded a video while I was sculpting this guy. to uh, That should help people get a better likeness when they're working on a doll. A character doll. And they want it to look a certain way. Practice is the only way to get really good at making a likeness. But the tips that I give in the video should help. Okay, that's it. Have a good day. Bye for now.